thank you for hanging in there and coming on back here to the Pax West stage. Not that you had any choice. I hope you guys are enjoying the show, though. Bringing you more booth content, bringing you more interviews. That's what we're here for. By the way, just to remind everybody, the show is interactive. So those buttons below me, you can be pressing and interacting and changing some things up here on the stream and the set. Want to make sure you're part of the show and we make sure we also got your chat up here. But we're going to do a little demo, a little something different. Uh, we heard about this this project here. Um, our wonderful people in marketing at Mixer had heard about this opportunity and what was going on at PAX. So we really wanted to make sure we highlighted that and talked a little bit about you, about this program specifically with you guys. So I want to introduce, of course, here, Brent. Brent, welcome to the stage. Thank you. And Brent. Allison, of course. Nice to meet you. We'll be, we'll be formal and everything. <laughs> um, and for people who don't know, kind of introduce yourselves. Brent, uh, you know, what do you do? And then Allison, of course. Yeah. Um, I am the co-founder and chief creative officer of Artifact Technologies, uh, which created this uh, geo game experience. I'm also a uh, writer who's worked on a lot of games and um, TV shows and movies. Nice. Been in the industry for a while then. Long time. Nice. And you've partnered with Allison and her company, of course. Yeah. So I'm Allison. I work on the campaign management team at the Ad Council, which is the largest producer of public service ads in the U.S. Yeah. People might have heard that name. Yeah. Ad yeah. Council people before. like Smokey the Bear, Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk, kind of all those people. And Love Has No Labels is actually one of our biggest, most successful campaigns. If you remember, um, in 2015, we actually launched a campaign where there were two dancing skeletons behind an x-ray screen and you come out and you realize they're not actually the people that you expect them to be. That's right, I remember yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, wait a minute, and you had some misconceptions and then the ad, I feel like that whole ad was about like, like blasting away misconceptions of people. Yeah, really getting people to rethink their bias and sort of realize that we all have this implicit bias within us and getting us to really reconsider that experience and then understand what we can do to create a more inclusive and accepting world. And so we're so excited to be here at PAX and to really just be bringing this message to gamers in a really authentic way by partnering with Artifact. Yeah, there's lots, lots of different audiences, of course, you guys are speaking to and you're reaching out to to help spread the message of diversity and inclusion. I know that's a big thing at Microsoft. We have this campaign called uh, Gaming for Everyone, g for e um, It's very important to us as well to make sure we're making our games as accessible to as many humans as possible because not everybody can hold a controller. Not everyone can play mouse and keyboard. And while, you know, maybe a majority of us can, we should also be making sure we're thinking about everybody. And you guys are really tackling that in the game sphere, it sounds like. Yeah, I think it's a really great opportunity to be able to bring this message to gamers in a way that's really authentic and kind of native to their platforms. I think this campaign has always tried to be in different places where you might not necessarily think of diversity and inclusion. You know, when someone says gaming, like your natural association isn't diversity and inclusion. But we know that it's a message this community really wants to get behind. And at our first activation at PAX last year, we really saw gamers coming together and saying, hey, this is something we want, this is something we want to fight for. And they're so glad that we were here and we're just really happy to be back again. Yeah, it sounds like this is something that people were asking for in general. But what I love is you didn't just come out and copy paste some sort of marketing campaign or some splashy images. You're like, well, what kind of language do gamers speak specifically? What would really resonate with them? What, you know, what would they really take home with them basically once the convention is over? And it sounds like you basically gamified that. So, and I think you guys actually have a little bit of a demo you're going to show us a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't I tell you just a little bit about. Yeah, set, yeah, set the stage, of course. I'm just excited to get to the demo. I know, I know. But you set the stage for me. Let me set the stage. So two years ago, our company came here to PAX with a geolocation game called Battlecasters. Yes. And um, we basically turned the entire convention floor uh, into a game board with beacons, the Bluetooth transponders that activate um, a, a notification in your phone when you get close enough to it and that allow you to collect content. And we had digital, digital content, digital. Yeah, and we had we yeah. had done something that was kind of Magic: The Gathering meets geocaching. I like it. Okay. So you go around collecting digital cards, and then you can do stuff with the digital cards. And uh, Ad Council was aware of what we did at Battlecasters, uh, what we did here with Battlecasters, and they decided, can you do something for us around the Love Has No Labels campaign? I love that. So you had already been doing this. You're already playing in this space. You know, in this in this bubble. Yeah. You guys are looking for a way to how can we speak more to gamers and spread this message that they're asking for. Yeah, and and the trick for this experience was we were dealing with real people, and so we wanted to have something that could take these heroes in the real world and bring them into the experience. So we hit on this idea of we're going to have an audience that's very well versed in comic books and superheroes. I going to say, if it's anything these ladies and gentlemen know, it's superheroes. And so we decided, let's get some 
really kick-ass comic book artists, including Dave Dorman. Really? Oh, and wow. get them to turn these people into superhero trading cards. Oh. And that's what we've done. And so you walk around to these different booths, all of whom are sponsors uh, of the experience, and collect these digital trading cards that tell a little bit of the story of why these people are superheroes in the Love Has No Labels community. I love that. So basically you gamified it in a language that's universal pretty much to 99.999, yeah. probably 100% of the people that are here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the root of this campaign is really about storytelling. And it's about exposing those real human experiences and getting people to really both be empathetic and also kind of find these role models and people who they can emulate um, in sort of the quest to make the world a better place. And so I think by kind of coming up with this everyday superhero theme, we were able to really highlight those individuals and then turning them into superheroes to really just make it super clear that like these are the people that we should all want to be and we should all look up to. Now the people you embody, are these made up superheroes? Are these real people that you superheroed? Yeah. So we superheroed them. <laughs> nice. That's a, that's a great use of the word. What we did was um, on, on the Ad Council side, they looked out across the entire globe and curated and found 12 people that represented and embodied all of these values that they were looking for. And then on our end, we took those people and aligned them with an artist, right, who shared their same values. And then I kind of came up with an identity for them as a superhero with a superhero name and the powers and the whole bit oh. and took their background and wrote it into a little kind of pithy blurb right. on the back of the card and then it all married together and it became this really cool kind of content collection experience. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the idea. Yeah. And I think from our perspective, the superheroes are really people who have fought for inclusion in a number of different communities. The campaign covers six discriminated classes, gender, sexuality, age, Age, race, religion, and ability. So you're basically identifying those key pillars. We're identifying those key pillars, both in terms of featuring diverse superheroes themselves, but really each of the heroes has done something to really change the perception of people within one of those specific discriminated classes. And so if you think about a great example is one of the people in our game, her name is Diana Nyad, and at the age of 64, she actually swam from Cuba to Florida, sort of Did shattering really? those barriers about, oh. like, what does it mean to be an older adult? And and older adults can be just as athletic as younger adults and really thinking about it like that. I love the idea that you guys are dispelling those myths and those pre those preconceived notions or even those nuances people, you know, might not even realize that they even have internally and I you know, bringing them to light and identifying them so that way it's like, hey, this is a thing. This is a serious uh, uh, agenda that, you know, maybe people are just not even thinking about and like it's something to be, starts being more sensitive and it, you know, you're not asking people tons of stuff. You're just asking them just to be aware and acknowledge it. Yeah. yeah. And I think we know that just by making people aware of the implicit biases we all have, we can do things in order to make a difference. Nice. And I think you guys have a demo here, actually. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so I'm happy to walk you through a quick demo. Ooh. And oh. I unplugged uh -oh. it. Uh oh, we unplugged we it. It's back. That's okay. We're doing okay, it. We're doing so, it live. People um, can the hang app in. We there. developed. Um, it's called the League of Extraordinary Humans. Kind of playing off of this idea of these extraordinary superheroes I like it. that yeah. we're featuring, and it's a location-based experience. So as you move around packs, you go to different booths. Xbox being one of them. Um, where once you arrive, your phone will connect to a beacon. It'll send you a text message notification. So we're gonna tap as if we were approaching Xbox. It tells us. We're going to simulate it. it, right? Yeah. Um, and we're going to answer two Love Has No Labels challenge questions, which are all about implicit bias. Interesting. Yeah. So the first challenge asks you to tap the image of an individual who you think is a gamer. Do you want to guess? Based on what this app is about, uh -huh. can I select more than one? Um, or is it just it's you want to select one. your gamer? Well, I know the person in the middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, by default, I would tap the person in the middle because okay. I know I know who she is. Awesome. Okay. So Anne is a gamer, but yep. Sean and August are also gamers. Um, and this card's really about highlighting the idea that the gaming community includes people of all different genders, sexualities, age, races, religions, and abilities, and just celebrating this idea that to love gaming is to really love, embrace, and welcome everybody who's within the game. I love community. this low latency interface of basically just simply showing people that all three of these people are gamers, and here's why. It doesn't matter any of these things. Like you got here, you got gender, you got sexual orientation, age, race, religion, ability, you name it. Literally anyone can be a gamer. Yeah. Yep. 
the, the keyword being inclusive yes. of everyone. And it looks like you unlock yeah. something here. So this lets us unlock one of our 12 digital superhero cards. So this superhero is named Mindbender. I love this. Yeah. And so in his real life, his name is August Phyllis Reyes. He actually um, had an accident a few years ago um, where he became wheelchair bound. And after that, decided to really champion inclusive design. Um, he actually did that at Xbox. So after his accident, he basically was like, wait a minute, I'm finding these things I'm struggling with because he hadn't had to struggle with them before. It's like, exactly. how can I empower other people like me to smash those misconceptions? Yep. Yeah, and then I think he also really worked to bring together other people who hadn't had his experience and try to make That's them it. aware of what they could do. Really rallying behind that. Yeah. yeah. So he is one of our heroes. And again, go back to the profile art real yeah. quick. So you partnered with some of some, some of you know some of the best out there to yep. make sure they embody these super superheroes yeah. in a nice visual aesthetic that people very much know and love. Exactly. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Go to the next challenge. Yes or no? There are simple things I can do to make a more accepting world for all people, regardless of their gender, sexual orientation, race, religion, age, or ability. So my gut would say yes. Even okay. even there's small actions every day that you can do to, to yeah. promote that. Exactly. Um, and some things that we would tell people to do in order to become more inclusive and accepting yourself is take some time to learn about a religion, a custom, or a gender identity that's different from your own or that's unfamiliar to you. And don't be afraid to ask questions when you're in a situation where you don't know about something. I think many of us have found where we're, we're culturally, we're in a situation where we're maybe not in every day. Um, and it can be uh, in many variations. A great example, I mean, I'll share here is um, my mom used to work for the Special Olympics. So when I grew up, um, she would take me to those big events. Um, they would have these giant Special Olympic events and my friends I would meet, you know, and I think I was eight, eight or nine. But I guarantee you, like when I went from, you know, school to that, I was like, wait a minute, these people are different. These people are not who I'm used to interacting with. So I love the idea here that you guys are promoting this because in the beginning, I was very much of the non of, of the nine mindset that I was like, I don't know how to react. I don't know how to be. But then I was like, well, wait a minute. These are people. These people are like my friends at school. Yeah. They're just the same. Like, they're different, but so were, you know, so were they, and so am I, and so were, yeah, them. So. Yeah. No, I mean, really, at the end of the day, before anything else, we're all human. Yep. We really do all. But I like the idea that you're pushing people to, like, like religion's a great one. So yeah. uh, over at Microsoft, obviously, we get people from around the world, and you might see people um, taking part in something that might be a religious belief to them. And um, instead of maybe, like, being like, oh, no, that's weird, being like, Hey, I'm curious. Not to, uh, you know, not here to offend, but I'm actually just naturally curious about this, and I'm sure they're more than welcome to actually share if you just asked. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and the nice thing is too that we're we're giving you things to think about, and part of the reason that it's a, lo a geolocation game is not just to send you to the sponsors, right? right, but also to let you think about these things, let these ideas resonate as you move from one location to the other, and. You know, it gives a moment of contemplation so that it's not just about trying to process it all at once. It's it's kind of something more about the whole experience and in total. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Because because you have multiple locations, right? Six. I, yeah, six different yeah, that's locations. important to point on because, for example, this was the Xbox booth. So when they're calling it the Xbox booth, they're going to see these games like Dragon Ball, yeah. Black Desert, Sea of Thieves. Yeah. But then they're going to be reading things like this and thinking about, well, wait a minute, what is what do these games mean to maybe that person? And they're going to be walking around seeing people of all different ethnicities. Well, oh yeah, and, and, and that's definitely here. It's, this is this is a absolutely. melting pot here, a pack of yeah of who's who and what's what from all around the world. Yeah. yeah, and it's taking you to places that you might not go otherwise. I think we've heard from people at the booth when they finish the game that they're just so excited that they've gotten a chance to explore the convention in a way they wouldn't have otherwise, sort of do some internal self-reflection. And people are all playing it differently. You know, some people will come to our booth and say, I'm going to do this all in a half hour. And some people will sort of play it through the course of the event. And so, you know, they started on Friday and they're almost all the way through and sort of taking it at their own pace which is awesome. And at the end, um, when you finish, we're giving everyone who completes the game um, a free Love Has No Labels Penny Arcade pin. Really? Um, That's awesome. Yeah, you guys awesome. partnered with Penny, and you have one. I would love you to see what, it, what you guys... Yeah. Well, I have pocket one. change. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm sorry. I have it, I have it here. It's coming out. This That's is awesome. A, this is a gift to you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you. Well, I downloaded the app this morning, actually. I heard about this segment, and I, I, I was fascinated by the idea. So I downloaded the app. They're leashing me today, but tomorrow they're unleashing me so I can enjoy my pack. So I love the idea. And actually here, I believe that camera's still on. Yeah, that one right here. I want to just zoom in on show that. 
and it's basically really cool. so you guys actually partnered with Penny Arcade on yep. this. And th this is basically the reward. This like, is the and reward. these are very collectible. Like people, I know definitely this is a very big thing that people want to try to collect these. Absolutely. So yeah. I love the idea that you challenge people to go around to different booths. Also, if, if anything, it promotes exploration around packs because if yeah. you're going to stay, like me, if you're going to, like, let's say if I stood up here all day, yeah. four days a week, I would not get to experience packs. More importantly, experience the people of packs. So I love the idea that you guys have partnered with this. And by the way, thank you for making this and thank you for partnering with this because I think more messages, you know, I'm bi I'm completely biased with my upbringing and my childhood, but completely biased and think that this is a great idea to be able to promote this because there's a lot of just. People are just running autonomously and like, I just want to play this game. I want to go do this demo. But and you're not really like making people like, hey, we're, you know, hey, we need to stop. We need to interrupt your entire day. You're just saying, hey, you guys are going to these places. You're exploring packs. Let's just give you something to think about and maybe something that you might not have might not have clicked in here, you know, clicked you know, instinctively. Yeah. Yep. And that way, maybe going forward, the thing I'm excited about is kind of the trickle down effect. So six months from now, three months from now, if they're at a different con, they're at a different event, or maybe they're exploring or seeing a different city, um, they'll run into this and then think about this. I'm hoping that this will stop them and they might have that. Like, they see someone uh, celebrating their religion and be like, wait a minute, you know, that's awesome. Maybe I'm curious, maybe I want to ask them about that. So, And you have more gorgeous art, it looks yeah, like so here. Yeah, we can show you um, some of the other cards that we created. I think they're really beautiful. This is my favorite. Um, this girl's name is Marley Diaz, um, and when she was eight years old, she noticed that there weren't a lot of um, black girls being represented in children's books. And she was like, why don't I see myself in these books? So she decided that she was going to start um, an organization called A Thousand Black Girl Books, or maybe it was 10,000 Black Girl Books, I forget. Um, and then she was going to collect all of the books that she could find that featured black girls. Um, and she's actually done it, and she's donated, I think, over 10,000 books um, to community libraries. Um, that are neat, and she's actually working on her own book now that does feature a black girl. I was gonna character. say, it sounds like she got inspired to even make a book herself. Yeah. And she's 12 years old. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. It's Jesus. crazy. These people are so awesome. Oh, legit superhero right there. Yeah. I was this gonna say, these woman. are real life superheroes. Yeah. Seriously. This is Diana Naya, the woman I was talking about who swam from Cuba to Florida. Um, this woman's name is Josh Jennings. Um, she's a major advocate um, for transgender people. Um, this woman's name is Isabella, um, and she, while she was in school um, for fashion design, actually created clothing to help older Americans get dressed by themselves when sometimes they wouldn't be able to. So she's sort of similar to August, thinking about inclusive design. Nice. Yeah. I love the idea that these people basically are finding areas in life and, and gaps that exist yeah, exactly. where there's not, like, I love the books idea, the underrepresentation, and uh, she wanted, she's like, why can't I relate to more women of color in comic books and, you know, hero aspects? So she's like, no, I'm going to gather them all so that way people can find them more easily because I'm sure there's a thousand other girls out there. I can't believe she's 12, by the way. Yeah. And now she's it's making amazing. her own book. She's like, no, screw it. I want to make more. It's very humbling, isn't it? Yeah. 12 years old? It makes me feel like I haven't done enough. No, I, tell me about it. But, I mean, huge shout-out to both of your companies for really, you know, your company for challenging this in the t from the tech standpoint, taking something that worked, it was successful with PAX, and basically finding a really good... Because you could have easily just gamified another game, worked with another sponsor, and just made some little fun geolocation game. But I love the idea that, no, let's try something different and something new. Yeah. No, this was... When we heard about this project, we pushed aside a couple other ones to do this because this is really meaningful, right? This is doing a game with a, a huge audience, but doing something that actually might change the world, right? Or at least change some minds. Yeah, there's like 90,000 people here. That's a great start, I think. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And of course, Ad Council for, for making this happen. And again, I, I love the idea that you guys, let's speak gamer, so that way the gamers can understand the language. What you're teaching is universal, I would say. What you're teaching is just a human element across the board, but making it more relatable and obviously more like, wait a minute, I, I, what is this? I know this language, you know, of gaming, so. Yeah, it's that. so great to really be able to reach people where they are, and we know we'll make a bigger impact that way. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me up on stage. This is great. Again, this is Love Has No Labels. And what's the, and the app? They can download it right now. If it's they're called here. The League of Extraordinary Humans. Um, and if you want to download it, you can search for it in both the Apple and Android app stores. Um, 
and we can also give you some more info um, at the Love Has No Labels booth in the Diversity Lounge. That's awesome. Well, thank you again for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you all to go download that app if you are here at PAX and check it out. I love this idea. Please keep doing this at cons. I would say please keep doing this at cons. <laughs> we definitely have more awesome content here for you guys, so please stay tuned as we cut roll here. I think we got another booth tour for you guys right now.